The Lord is gracious and compassionate, long-suffering and ever faithful. The Lord is good to all, his compassion rests upon all his creatures. Well, good morning and welcome to our service today. Welcome to Clock. And we'll begin with a hymn which Alfie will play for us. Alfie will play At the Name of Jesus, which is hymn number 41 in Mission Praise. <laughs> given for us by Noel. The reading is taken from the book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 10. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said, said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Amen. Now a hymn in our red hymn book, Hymns of Faith and Freedom, includes this little known hymn at number 317 written by the very obscure L. Guggenberger, about whom very little is known. 
But the hymn begins like this. Oh, help the prophet to be bold, the poet to be true. It yet remains for us to learn what love to all may do. With faith not pent within a book or buried in a creed, but growing with the expanding thought and deepening with the need. Hymn 317 in Hymns of Faith and Freedom. But the hymn is an impassioned plea for faith to be kind, be pure, be just, as the writer puts it. Now I thought of the hymn today for reasons which I'll come to in a moment, but did wonder who L. Guggenberger might be. Now one of the useful things about hymns and faith and freedom is that the late Reverend Dr. Arthur Long included an index of all the authors included in the book and added brief biographical notes on each of them. But for just three or four names, uh, he could find out nothing about them. So all that is included for those writers is simply their names. And L. Guggenberger is one of these. But the internet is a wonderful thing. And I've been able to discover that Guggenberger was in fact the married name of Louisa Sarah Bevington, a poet born in Battersea in London in 1845 and raised as a Quaker. It is as Louisa Bevington that she is generally remembered, but although she wrote poems in Quaker publications, she became better known as an active member of the anarchist movement. Now the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography says that at the time, and I quote, London had become the headquarters of continental communist activity. She moved in their circles and was involved in efforts to set up an organization called the Anarchist Communist Alliance and wrote an anarchist manifesto for it. She also had close links with the French communards and translated a work on the Paris Commune. Contributing to anarchist journals, she favoured, says the Dictionary of National Biography, the short hair and sensible short skirts and boots worn by the female members of the anarchist movement. She died aged just 50 in 1895 and was buried in St Pancras Cemetery in Finchley. Most of her poetry was written under her own name. A great believer in science, her first volume of poetry, Keynotes, has the rare distinction of having captured the interest of Charles Darwin, who is said to have read it in 1879 after not having opened a volume of verse for 15 years. So her life and commitments were rather different to the usual ones favoured by hymn writers in the Victorian era, which perhaps explains the coy use of her married name when affixed to her writings when they were used as hymns. But the hymn is about faith, about faith in people changing the world for the better, but it begins with this appeal for boldness in prophecy. Now I thought about this because last Sunday was Pentecost, an important day in the Christian year. The date really which marks the beginning of the Christian church. This too is tied up with prophecy, which is why I included that reading, that passage from Ezekiel. When Ezekiel, by divine command, prophesied to the wind and called it to blow on the dead bodies in the valley of his vision, it was the breath of God that breathed into them and filled them with new life. Ezekiel is told by the Lord, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied, 
as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great host. Now this is one of the great biblical accounts of prophecy. It ties in with something in John's Gospel, where Jesus says to Nicodemus, in what is probably an allusion to Ezekiel's vision, the wind blows where it will, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know whence it comes or whither it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And this in turn takes us back to one of the passages in Acts, which is most closely associated with Pentecost. In the second chapter of Acts, a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind to the apostles. And Peter himself prophesies that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. A reminder that prophecy is not just something for unusual characters like Ezekiel. In our way, we're all called upon to be prophetic, to be open to the call for justice, love and compassion that is always needed in our world. Prophecy is something we're all called to do. We're all expected to be prophetic about the issues that we encounter. This is very well brought out in a new book by Cliff Reed entitled Beyond Darkness, a collection of prayers, thoughts, reflections and readings for worship. This is book here. I'd like to read now one short passage from the book entitled Spirit of Prophecy. I will pour out my spirit on all mankind and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. May the spirit of prophecy be with us, the spirit that speaks out against cruelty, corruption and injustice, the spirit that speaks truth to power, the spirit that isn't cowed by the bullies, bombasts and tyrants. May the spirit of prophecy be with us, speaking out for this planet and its myriad creatures calling us and all people to reverence and protect the cycles of nature. May the spirit of prophecy be with us, poured out upon earth sons and daughters, upon young women, young men, and all who dream dreams of wholeness, beauty, and peace. May it be so. Well, let's join together now in the fellowship of prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, we know that you are everywhere, but now we bring ourselves into your presence. Wherever we may be, we come now to praise you, to thank you, to worship you, to listen to you. Grant that we may stay by your side this day and walk with you all the days of our life. God of wonder and of joy, come now and dwell with us. When we are weak, give us strength. When we are unhappy, give us courage. When we are puzzled, show us the way. Help us to find our greatest joy in knowing that you are beside us as we go forward may the light of your hope shine in our eyes and faith and love possess our hearts and these and all our prayers we ask in Jesus name who taught us when we pray to say together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. 
Amen. Well, we'll listen now to our next hymn, which is Lord, Forgive Me Day by Day. Hymn number 370 in Hymns of Faith and Freedom. And Alfie will play that for us now. Thank you to everyone at home for joining with us in our worship today and thank you to Noel for reading for us today and thank you to Alfie for playing for us. Well let's close now with the benediction. Let us pray. May the God who guides our journey, who bears the suffering of the world, who empowers us with the gifts of life, now fill us with courage, wisdom and joy, this day and evermore. Amen.